Ghana intends to adopt the new single ECOWAS currency, ECO, a statement issued by the presidency and signed by Communications Director Eugene Ahin expressed government's determination to join the member states of West African Economic and Monetary Union soon in the use of the new currency. The West African Economic and Monetary Union, also known as UEMWA, from its name in French, Union Economique et Monetaire West African, is an organization of eight mainly Francophone West African states within the ECOWAS established to promote economic integration among countries that share the CFA franc as a common currency. It was created by a treaty signed at Dakar, Senegal on January 10, 1994, by the heads of state and governments of Benin, Burkina Faso, Côte d'Ivoire, Mali, Niger, Senegal, and Togo. On May 2, 1997, Guinea-Bissau, a former Portuguese colony, became the organization's eighth and only non-Francophone member state. On December 21, the president of UEMOA, Alessane Ouattara, at a news conference with French President Emmanuel Macron in Ivory Coast, made the declaration on the decision taken by eight West African member states of UEMOA to discontinue the use of the Financial Community of Africa CFA franc currency. Ghana believes the adoption of a single currency market will help remove trade and monetary barriers, reduce transaction costs, boost economic activities and also raise living standards, calling on other ECOWAS member states to expedite work towards implementing the single currency usage decision. Let's uh, get onto the telephone lines and speak with the financial analyst, uh, Courage Kinsley Mate, who is joining us now. Uh, good afternoon, sir. Thank you very much uh, for your time. So the talk of ECO, I know that uh, the, there are many people who wonder what this really means to intra-Africa trade. Can you tell us? Well, good afternoon. Thanks for having me. Um, precisely the use of a single currency such as the ECHO, what it would do is to sidestep issues related with exchange rates, effects, or costs when you want to engage in international transactions. And because of the cost imposed by exchange rate convertibility, when you bring in the ECO and countries within the, the sub-region transact using the same currency, then such costs are eliminated. Mm. And then trade amongst countries can then be boosted. Now, when we talk about this intra-regional uh, uh, trade, normally the model is the European uh, market. What you notice is that because of their structures and the common currency that they use, trade among the U European country is about 57%. But when you come to Africa, only 15% of our trade happens amongst ourselves. And when we adopt a common currency that eliminates exchange rate calls, this can help increase the trade amongst ourselves. So, so by all standards, uh, from the explanation you've just offered, by all standards, this is good? Well, it is good, but provided the respective economies have the conducive mm. infrastructure and policy in environment. You know, for instance, if, if, if you go to Nigeria and the cost of credit is cheaper compared to Ghana, then it appears exporters in Ghana would face high cost of production because of the cost of credit, probably also because of high cost of operations. And we may not maximize the benefits from intra-Africa mm. trade. Mm. So on the currency harmonization angle, it is good. But when you come to the specifics related to each individual economy, we need to also look at the structures and the policy environment. In right, country. so, so let's, look at, let's look at Ghana's, uh, the state of Ghana's current economy. Do you get the sense that uh, we as a country, our economy has the strength to issue the ECO by the June 2020 deadline? Well, I don't feel that confident. I think 2020 will be too soon for Ghana to mm. adopt the ECO. I mean, when you look at even things like the convergence criteria, we have the primary convergence and the secondary convergence. When you go to the primary convergence, there are about four of them. And at the moment, we can only say that we have achieved two. When it comes to gross reserves, at least three months, we have over three months. 
And when it comes to central bank financing not exceeding 10% of previous year's revenue, we are doing well on that count as well. Right. But when you come to budget deficit, the criterion for that is that you shouldn't exceed 3% of GDP. Currently, we are in excess of 4%. So, and therefore, 2020, the target is to do 4.7% budget deficit. That means that particular criterion alone leaves you with little hope for 2020. Mm. So, when we look at the fact that uh, the central bank has gone ahead uh, to issue uh, the new 200 and 100 Ghana CD notes recently. Do you get the sense that it is an indication that the the government or the central bank is ready for joining ECO just a couple of months away, the deadline? Well, um, again, if I flash back to a couple of MPC meetings uh, um, ago in, just in 2019, the sense you also get from the governor in one of those MPC meet press conferences was that we do not appear ready yet, not just as a country, but as a sub-region because of certain structures. Mm. Then again, the introduction of the new higher denominations. For me, um, again, with or without the introduction of the higher denominations, I would expect a transition phase a transition phase where you would use the two currencies together concur right. and then you phase out the other. So which means that you still can control your currency, introduce new currencies as you like, but then over time you must introduce them in such a way that withdrawal becomes less expensive. Right. Uh, Stanley Martin, we're grateful for your time.